Welcome to A Sip with Whiskey and Sweet Tea, the short show where your favorite movie-going beverages play games and sip on topics. Today's topic is Memento's Fan Theory. Hope you all enjoy it. You know, much like the movie, I thought we were going to come back to it again, just in a different order. So first of all, did you remember Sammy Jenkins? <laughs> you know, it's literally only the thing that he talks about the entire time. So one thing I think is very healthy for film discourse is completely insane fan theories. Yes, and I'm about that. Usually, Nolan films are rife with them. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually, like, one thing I don't think is healthy is when one particular theory becomes dominant and sort of cannibalizes all of the other ones. It's sad to say I was a little disappointed to find that the number one fan theory that most people will bring up if you talk about this movie kind of seems to be all of it. So we'll talk about that first and then I'll, I'll kind of go into the rabbit hole I went into while looking at this. But since you're new to this movie, you probably haven't heard this, but the biggest fan theory that a lot of people kind of take as the... It was a dream. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, uh, Sammy Jenkins is Leonard. So the theory goes that... There is no killer. Basically, Leonard was Sammy, and after he accidentally killed his wife, he conditioned himself into thinking that his wife was murdered. As you see uh, with the prostitute in the movie, where he's lying down in the bed and he's like reenacting the night mm -hmm. before the murder. According to this theory, that's not, he's not like remembering his wife or like trying to feel those feelings and stuff. He's actually trying to condition himself to think that that's what happened sort of the way that they were trying to condition Sammy to feel the electric pulses right. in that test. And there's a couple of other little hidden Easter eggs. You said you might not want to rewatch this movie, but this might challenge you with that. Okay, okay. okay. So do you remember in the movie, this is, this is another thing that's taken kind of as proof, so to speak, but in the flashbacks with his wife, you see him like pinching her butt and she's going ow and stuff. Yeah. And you see him giving her an insulin shot mm -hmm. near the end of the movie. And then uh, there's another cut where you see Sammy sitting in the mental hospital. And then for like a split second, it's actually Leonard. Yeah. So there's like all these kind of subliminal things. This isn't a fan theory that you have to dig too hard at because even... Uh, well, because like what you just kind of described, the very end I, of the I, movie thought, I thought is, that was kind of like what the idea was. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like Teddy even sort of suggests that he's Sammy when he's like confronting him at the end, which is the beginning of the movie. And he's like, oh, are you sure Sammy? he's not you know like he but it's one of those things where as i said like with with this movie it's very popular to like rewatch it and stuff and this is such a popular fan theory that a lot of people just kind of take it as fact and it's an interesting one i especially like i had this in my mind as i was watching it this most recent time it makes some sense i feel like there's some things that contradict it like the fact that according to his story sammy wasn't able to be conditioned but that also could just be like him distancing himself from it so like it's an interesting one i don't think there's enough proof to say it's a, it is the case but i don't think there's enough to disprove it and at least like the way nolan talks about the movie he, do he doesn't, like, sort of say, like, oh, yeah, that is, like, is Leonard who we think he is? It Although it could be that way, because the whole point of the movie, or at least what Nolan was interested in, was how you change as a person. Right. So that's the thing. Like, if he was Sammy, he definitely changed a lot. <laughs> yeah. He, so, like, um, but it's an issue. What do you think of that theory? So I think that one, uh, that's pretty, like I said, a lot of it lines up to kind of how I interpreted the movie. I was actually thinking that he actually wanted to kill his wife for whatever reason. And he tried to do it in this weird, bizarre way, like almost like a role play sort of thing. Maybe he slipped or something and hit his head, and that's why that happened, where he got his, you know, condition from. Or maybe that's just the excuse used. But I also, I like the idea of, okay, he failed the first time, so now I'm going to do it with insulin. But now I have this condition, condition in quotes, that I can blame it on. Because, like I said, at the end of the movie, he's so willing to just become a rampant killer. He's like, I'm just going to kill people. It'll be fine. You know, they never said what Sammy did before he... Is it right? <laughs> maybe I'm, he was a maybe he was a muscle man. I was watching. Yeah, but, it, I was like, all I can think. I'm like, Sammy. The guy that plays Sammy is the villain from the Garfield movie. But you know, that's just that was just my first. Oh, thought. that's right. He was also. Uh, 
Oh man, he was he was in something else recently too. He was wearing like glasses. Who was he? He was he was a bad guy in something else too. Ah, I'm gonna. Forget, I know I know but... what you're talking about because I yeah I know what you're talking about, but I can't think of what it is. But another kind of piece of proof to, or at least, you know, for people who believe that theory, is there's another kind of cut in the movie where his wife says, like, what's that for? And then Lenny says, it's for when I find the guy. And it's like, well, why would he be saying that to his wife, you know? Not that he says that to Natalie. But, it, like, it's, again, it's like that weird editing, yeah. like, at the end of the movie, so it kind of makes you question it. I think it's, I think it's one of the best fan theories, but I am... What's the most plausible, I, I am so disturbed far? to find that, like, when I, because I was thinking I would find just a treasure trove of interesting ideas, and I was sorely mistaken. I searched Nolan fan theories, and there's not that many for this movie. I know there's a lot for like others, so I was I was a little disappointed. It might be because the movie is a little bit more simple than his other ones, but I did find that there is a website called NolanFans.com, and this is <laughs> this is where the rabbit hole begins. There's a thread on Nolan fans about fan theories for this movie that's like kind of short, but there's like two guys that were like arguing. I pretty much just made notes on this one guy who he he has like very interesting ideas he believes that the three different motel rooms being rented out to lenny are the three different mental hospitals that he has been committed to over the years which was strange because i i if, as i was watching the movie i was like there was only two that we know of because yeah. the guy was like ripping them off it's honestly if anyone's listening you go to nolanfans.com and like look at this thread because this guy's like talking about stuff from the the short story that doesn't exist. He's so I almost <laughs> I should have just written down the entire comment because it is interesting and he's talking about films that have nothing to do with this movie and like using it as proof. Interesting stuff and pretty much everyone on the thread was like saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. But it's like if you want to hear an interesting fan theory, there's that. This was a cool one. So proposed that Lenny can actually sense when he's being manipulated because he used to have a sense for it when he was, uh, you know, so like when Natalie's messing with him and stuff, like it's like, oh, he something's not right. And I think he even has kind of a monologue, inner monologue that says that. This could be plausible because technically, as we said in our review, we find out she wasn't manipulating him as much as he was manipulating himself. Yeah. Everything goes back to that don't believe Teddy's lies thing that we see him right at the end, which is the beginning so the whole theory that he might actually have better sense about who who's messing with him or not is somewhat plausible although there's like a couple ways you could deflate this like for instance when he drinks the spit beer oh god that was so <laughs> gross that Dude. woman was so cruel for doing that <laughs> I mean, the dude drives up to the place in her dead boyfriend's car wearing his clothes. That's true. I'd, I'd probably be mad, too. Especially when it's like, obviously she could tell it's his car because the license well, plate is the same. You know what's insane. funny is they talk about in that movie about how you're driving a Jaguar. Like, it's, you know, like they're talking about, like, I was looking at it, so I thought it was like a junky, just like secondhand car. Because oh, I guess, Jaguar. I know, like... now I know that, but just looking at it. Before they even told me it was a Jaguar, I was just like, this just looks like something he picked up like the auto lot or something. If we have any listeners from the UK, be sure to tease Sweet Tea for not knowing Jaguar is like the the car brand of that's like the pride like, of the country. All I know is those weird ones that, you know, YouTubers brag about. They're Ferraris and something. McLaren's, yeah. Lambos. They're Lambo, yeah. So... He, I have my own theory. I was going to ask, do you have a, a fun fan theory so, to propose? So this is my theory. What if, you know, you talked about how Lenny is manipulating himself more than he's being manipulated by external people. Yes. What if we're the ones being manipulated? How so? So let's just say, for example, this is all just a confession that he wrote down in this weird jumbled manner. And we are essentially the jury and this is his way of getting out of his crimes. So, like, he's been convicted and he's, he's been convicted trial. of killing, like, you know, a whole bunch of John G's across the country. And, you know, I don't know, maybe he just didn't like the name John G or something, whatever. You want to know how dumb Lenny is? Natalie's boyfriend is named James G. Because his name is Jimmy. And yeah. they even say his name's James. He's not a John G. He's a James G. Yeah, most he would be a Jimmy G. Yeah, so what... How dumb are you, Lenny? It's not even the right name. 
So, <laughs> so anyway, so that's a side note, not so, a so, not a fan theory, but just something I was thinking this time watching the movie. I actually never realized that, but that's actually interesting. I never realized that until this time watching it, but I was just like, his name isn't even John, so like, how did he get tricked? So Whatever. what if he is like this serial killer, and this is essentially his confession, but he's trying to go for the whole insanity defense, so he's so, kind of, he, because so like he doesn't have a memory he problem. He doesn't have a memory problem, but cause at, the, at the end, I'm sorry, he sounds way too competent in the way he's deciding well i guess i'm just gonna kill people and just not remember and get that rush of joy for three seconds well and that's, also that, the way he talked about it, it's just it's so competent like he knows exactly what he's doing for somebody to just i'm like mm, there I, I was like this sounds like somebody making some excuses laying out some groundwork excuses for plausible deniability or something that's an interesting one for sure. It certainly would explain the uh, inconsistent amount of time it takes for him to forget <laughs> things. Right, like, the, there, like there that... was literally one where he's like chasing some guy, or I need to go back and watch this, but I thought about this too. What if the only thing that triggers him to relapse is like a spe specific frequency or sound or something? Because like, we, we, I was talking yeah. about that in the review, yeah. yeah. I think it's mostly just written out of convenience, but if I were to like make sense of it, I think it's focus, you know what I mean? I think it's a distraction. Yeah. Like loud noise, wait, what was I doing? So like, I think that's the reason. He's the dog. But it not. is kind of funny, like if you think of the spans of time in the whole movie, the ending is like the longest amount of time he goes without forgetting something. And he's hyper Because he goes like yeah. from the motel to the killing location, strangles the guy, asks Teddy who the guy is, has explained who the guy is by Teddy, changes the info, like that the whole ending is like 20 minutes long or fifth, fifth it's it's a good chunk of time it's the longest time he goes without remembering anything so it is sort of funny how, <laughs> how uh, convenient it is that he can go that long with that but that that's a neat fan theory maybe not as airtight as usual but i just i think this sort of thing is what keeps film discourse interesting and i hate it when there's just one theory everyone takes as truth so tell us in the comments what you think have you seen memento if so do you have some weird proposition like what, what, what do you think is really going on in the movie is it as good the second time around do you remember sammy <laughs> jenkins <laughs> and how and how willing are you to you know tattoo you know, your daily to-do list on your body so you don't forget it i mean that's basically what that is it's a to-do list just remember to brush your teeth, everybody. Brush your teeth, everybody. But thanks for joining us. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell if you want notifications. And, and we'll see you guys next time. A Sip with Whiskey and Sweet Tea is a production of La Prince Laboratories. It is edited by Pat Mars and produced by Alejandro Castillo, with original artwork by Asa Sparza. Follow us on Twitter at Reels on the Rocks and tweet at us with any movies or topics you'd like us to discuss in the future.